Bangkok, Thailand is a fascinating Southeast Asian city that offers something amusing for everyone. Sometimes referred to as the Big Mango, Bangkok is an important international hub and the home of over 12 million residents. This video includes 25 of the best things to do in Bangkok, so let's jump right in and get started exploring this magical, tasty, and diverse city. Number one is Wang Lang Market, which is located adjacent to Sirirat Hospital. There's a stall that makes deep-fried bite-sized pieces of pork that will literally melt in your mouth. Kanam Tung Tak is another famous treat at Wang Lang Market. Number two is the gigantic Chatuchak Weekend Market, including over 5,000 permanent stores. And if you count the makeshift stalls and hawkers around the market, the number of vendors is closer to 15,000, making Chatuchak the largest market in Thailand. Number three is Klong Thai Market, the fresh food bread basket of Bangkok. The biggest, most bustling, fresh, wet market in central Bangkok, and lots of food to buy here. We're gonna check this out. The entire repertoire of Thai cooking ingredients are available at Klong Thai, including a few interesting, and extremely exotic foods if you look in the right places. Number four is to visit a floating market. And there are a few that set up on the weekends just on the outskirts of town. I'm here at that Talat Nam, Bang Nam Phu, which is a local little floating market. Though Bangkok floating markets are a little Thai touristy, they are a great place to spend a day of leisure browsing and eating wonderful food. It's kind of like a sweet tomato juice. Um, maybe with a little bit of papaya mixed in. That's, that's what it tastes like. That's pretty good. Number five is Pratunam Market. Bangkok's Pratunam Market, which is one of the busiest wholesale markets in Bangkok. Shopping is often a major component of any visit to Bangkok, and Pratunam Market specializes in wholesale clothing. Number six is MBK Shopping Center a mega mall that's literally a country in and of itself. Electronics, clothes, souvenirs, and a huge food court on the sixth floor are a few of the draws. Number seven is Otakal Market, a high quality fresh market that caters to the upper class. The aisles are wide and clean, and the produce is nothing but the finest. There's also a great selection of hawker stalls serving delicious food. Bangkok's Dusit Zoo is number eight. Okay, I'm here today at Bangkok's Dusit Zoo, which is the central zoo of the city. In case there are any lions or tigers that decide to escape, there's a good selection of street food right outside the gates of the Dusit Zoo to distract them as you run for your life. Number nine on the list is Lumpini Park, located just north of the Silom district. Surrounded by tall buildings, this is like a sanctuary of greenness in the middle. It's great if you want to go jogging, but I'm not here to jog today. I'm just taking a stroll and eating ice cream. Lumpini Park is a natural escape from the fast pace of Bangkok. It's a sanctuary where crows and monitor lizards reside. Don't miss the evening public aerobics dance sessions. Getting a Thai massage is number 10. You cannot visit Bangkok without indulging in a traditional Thai massage. I can already feel my body rejuvenating I'm gonna take a quick nap. A Thai massage can actually be quite painful, but keep in mind that you can always ask the masseuse to take it easy on you. Number 11 is the Grand Palace and Wat Prakeao, located in the heart of Bangkok. So I'm standing outside of Bangkok's Grand Palace and Wat Prakeao, which is one of the most famous attractions in all of Bangkok. I went there a couple years ago, so I'm not gonna go in today, but Definitely, if you come to Bangkok, you've got to check out the Grand Palace and Wat Prakeao. It's one of the most revered sites in all of Thailand and one of the most iconic landmarks in Bangkok. If a tuk-tuk driver approaches you and tells you the palace is closed for the day, it's probably a scam. And instead, walk yourself to the main entrance gate to get in. So I'm gonna enter the reclining Buddha. Just behind the Grand Palace is number 12. Wat Po, home of the Golden Reclining Buddha. Wat Po is also famous as being the birthplace of the Thai traditional massage. Number 13 is Wat Arun, the Temple of Dawn. 
So it costs just three baht to cross over the Chaprayao River, and we're heading over to Wat Arun, which is one of the coolest temples in all of Bangkok. The fine sculpture details and the steep climb to the top level of the temple are a few of the main highlights of visiting Wat Arun. It's definitely not for you if you're afraid of heights, because it's almost like climbing up a ladder, but the view from up here is great. Number 14 is Wat Saket, also known as the Golden Mountain. Wat Saket, which is also known as Phu Khao Tong, which is the Golden Mountain, Bangkok's Golden Mountain. The 318 stairs to the top takes just 5 to 10 minutes to climb, and your effort is rewarded with fantastic panoramic views of Bangkok. Number 15 is the Erawan Museum, famous for its three-headed elephant. Within the three-headed elephant is an impressive museum, while the beautiful gardens that surround the complex are neatly manicured and make a perfect place to take a peaceful stroll. Number 16 is the Wimanmek Mansion. It's the world's largest golden teak mansion, so unfortunately they don't allow photography inside, but we can get some photos from the outside. Just finished the tour, it took about 30 minutes, and it's it's really cool inside, impressive, impressive to see. For nightlife, shopping, and restaurants, Khao San Road is number 17. I am on Khao San Road, which is the center of backpacking here in Bangkok, Thailand. Located just outside Saladang BTS station, the area of Silom is number 18. And at daytime, this is the central business district of the city, and at night, it turns into a night market. All kinds of stalls and shopping starting at about 5 p.m. Businesses and banks control the day, while night markets and the famous Pat Pong Street take over at night. Silom is yet another area in Bangkok where there's an abundance of street food available everywhere you look. Victory Monument in Bangkok, Thailand. At number 19 is Victory Monument. And since it's a transportation hub of Bangkok, the roundabout is full of shopping, food, and entertainment. Don't skip a meal at Boat Noodle Alley, a collection of canal-side restaurants next to Victory Monument that serve bowls of pure porky delight. Number 20 is durian fruit. While its shell is spiky and intimidating, its flesh is sweet like nectar and creamy like butter. A durian is a fruit like no other, a unique and sensational flavor and texture that should be experienced by anyone that visits Bangkok. While some dislike the pungent smell or the pudding texture, in my opinion, a durian is the absolute heaven on earth. Thai street food and home-style restaurants is number 21. Fresh herbs, spicy chilies, zesty lime juice, and a host of tropical fruits and vegetables all combine to make Thai food intensely appetizing. Rated as one of the top cities in the world for dining, Bangkok's food paradise reputation won't let you down. Fancy sit-down restaurants are great, but in my opinion it's the street side stalls and the family-run hole in the walls that serve the best Thai cuisine. A Thai feasting experience will thrill your taste buds and keep a smile on your face. One way to bring home the wonderful array of Thai flavors is by signing up for a Thai cooking class, which comes in at number 22. There are a number of different choices from professional cooking schools to motherly style home cooking courses. Often a cooking course will include a visit to a local wet market, followed by preparing a set menu of a number of different dishes. Don't worry you'll get to eat what you cook, too. This is the flavor that will give us the deliciousness of this green curry we're about to cook. So I'm at the market, I'm gonna get some of this stuff. Number 23, located near Yawarat, Chinatown, is Pahurat, a little slice of India in the heart of Bangkok. Fabric and clothing, chai and chapatis are all available in this concentrated area of merchants. I go to explore the mixture of cultures and of course to eat Indian, Bangladeshi, and Burmese cuisine. 
first dip it into the sauce. Give me a plate of this and I'm happy. The historical Pak Klong Talat, or Bangkok's Central Flower Market, is number 24. I am at Bangkok's Pak Klong Talat, which is the famous flower market. People come to purchase flowers for everything from gifts for their special loved ones to flowers with religious and cultural significance. The sea of brightly colorful flowers is mesmerizing. Finally, at number 25 is Yawarat, Bangkok's bustling and always energetic Chinatown. Gold stores, lottery ticket vendors, Chinese medicine dealers, and exotic food markets all add to the mix. When evening in Yawarat falls, street food and seafood restaurants take over and don't stop serving until the wee hours of the night. This is called Kwai Chow, and it's in a soup made from all things pig. Sampeng Market, also located in Yawarat, is an intensely busy shopper's paradise that includes an unfathomable range of knickknacks. So whether you choose to go on a shopping rampage, a street food pilgrimage, a peaceful temple visit, or a cultural museum trip, there's no doubt that the steamy hot capital of Thailand has it all. Mark Weens here. Thank you very much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a quick thumbs up and also leave a comment right below to let me know what you think about Bangkok. I want to hear from you. Finally, don't forget to click the big red subscribe button so you don't miss the next travel and street food videos. And one last thing, right below this video in the description box, you'll see some links Go ahead and click those links for lots more useful information about visiting Bangkok. Thanks again for watching and see you soon.